Commander himself, Ebeniza Obe. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to get our updates as we upload them on Box TV. And if you would like us to touch light on any notable person you know, please kindly let's have your uh, take on the comment section. My name is Lovely Kerry. Today you'll be talking about the chief commander Obe himself, Ebenezer Obe, that's the biography we touch lighted today. The chief commander Obe was born 3rd April 1942. He celebrated his 80th birthday in grand style this year. Named Ebenezer Aremu Olasupo Obe Fabi, but goes by the state name Ebenezer Obe. Go so but so later, go see what so level, go so not so level, so let You remember that story? Well, he was talking about a uh, man who was going on a journey with his children. All that we come back to that. All right, he hails from Idogo in Ogu State. His father was Nathaniel Olashewo Fabi, and his mother Abigail Onyidamola Fabi. <laughs> His musical talent was discovered early in his primary school days at Methodist Primary School. As a youth, he was the lead vocalist on the Ifelodun Mambo Orchestra, which was formed by the youth of Idogo community, and participated in a lot of acting while growing up. He, he got the nick obey during his duties as a class monitor and in his habit of asking his fellow students to obey. So that's how it came about the name Obey as a class monitor. He has always been a leader anyway from that young age. So he's always telling he was always telling his students to to obey school rules and instructions. So that's how he got the name Obey. He quickly rose through ranks to become the band leader and that shaped him into a dexterous and harmonious music maker okay so that was after his primary school now now midway into his secondary school he moved to lagos in the mid 19th after being tutored six years under the legendary prince olaiwala olaguju that is Fatai Rolling Dollars Band. The name of the band, Federal Reading Brothers. Now, this band is known for modernizing the sound of Juju by adding the funkiness of Yoruba drumming, more Western style guitars and drum kits, and adding multiple talking drums, which was all like what every other juju musician was doing at the time. Yeah. 
Kolele, Pata Pata, Elonia, Adika Minesi, Minesi, Omo Loke, Omo Eba Uri. So even though he was with Rolling Dollars, by the time he was going to form his own band, he did not coach members from Fatai Rolling Dollars band. So the International Brothers comprised O.K. Aminu, Obey's all tobacco singer, Samson Ogunladi, the banjos player, then Vasco, the samba player, Gabriel Adedeji, who played bass, guitar, and agogo, and a host of others. These men were not just band members, they were Obey's close allies, and they sang about many of them in the songs. As a songwriter, band leader, he rose to prominence due to the sweetness of his baritone, the live lesson in his songs, the prolonged fusion of drums and guitar in his music, and his dexterity with the guitar. These qualities make obey songs enjoyable by all the old and young alike. Early in life and as a child in his mom's church, he showed inclinations towards music. According to the chief commander himself, in an interview he granted the vanguard, the musical procession in the mom's church had a significant influence on him as a child as he started showing signs of loving music <laughs> By 1964, he had formed his own band, the International Brothers, which later became the Inter-Reformers in the early 1970s. Inter-Reformers, Inter-Reformers, right? In the early 1970s, with a long list of Juju album hits under the West African musical label. He excelled in praise, singing for rich Nigerian socialites and business tycoons. They had hit singles, Ewawum Ojumiri and uh, Olomi Watemi. Watemi, oh. yeah, my dearest wife, listen to me, which was in his debut single. In 1968, he released Omowan Re Soja Afe Soku, which means we cry. We are crying because our sons are going to war. In a bid to console families whose sons are being conscripted into the army following the Biafran War. Note that it was not a voluntary thing, they were being conscripted into the army following the Biafran War. Apart from being the leading light of various bands, Obe also collaborated with some of the celebrated musicians of that time. He worked with Bangoshe and Savage Orchestra, and it was during these years that he met the biggest 
he met the biggest influence of his musical career. Let's we uh, let you in more on how he began his journey into getting his music promoted. So Ebenezer Obe trekked from for miles from Mushi to Lagos Island to seek a deal with Decca. Decca is a record company. The spectacular thing about the deal was that when it was arrived at, it was one of the most significant and defining points in the career of the musician. <laughs> and his band without strategic promotion so he had to take a step to promote his music. Ebenezer Obey was met with disappointment at first but didn't give up and was eventually signed with Tekka Records. Although the earlier agreement with the company was to sell at least 500 copies of his album after which he will be signed. But after the rigor of selling them by himself, he sold 19 copies less. But as favor will have it, Mr. Quest, the owner of the company, bought 25. And that was how he exceeded the target by six. Ebenezer Obey married Juliana Olaide Olufade in 1963, and they have children and grandchildren and grandchildren. Uh, but sadly, on August 23, 2011, she died. She passed away. <laughs> On his 15th birthday on April 3rd, 1992, he was ordained an evangelist by Archbishop Benson Idawosa. And that was the beginning of Ebenezer Obey's transition into gospel music. Although Ebenezer Obey enjoyed much fame as a juju musician, pioneering his juju Miliki Subjourn touring the United States and the United Kingdom selling his songs, and even buying Decca Records West African Company. There were no doubts that he was a successful juju musician, one of the most successful that Nigeria ever saw. He founded the Ebenezer Obe Music Company Limited in 1979 in Ubu State as a record label that was primarily dedicated to the production and distribution of his songs. This record label was soon to have branches in other locations in Nigeria, Agege and Pangu in Lagos State, in Ibado, Aba, and even in Kaduna. In addition to creating his record label, which in itself is a big enough evidence that the chief commander was a highly successful musician, 
about 30 of Obey's albums sold over 100,000 copies, while two of his albums sold over a million copies and earning him 30 gold discs and two platinum discs, respectively, from Decca Records. Despite all this, Ebenezer Obey did not feel truly fulfilled because he kept getting the nod to delve into the world of gospel music. His call to the world of gospel music was not as sudden as many people believed. It started from his formative years. Record he was a Methodist and always go to church with his mom. Yes. Ebenezer Obey's mom, Abigail Onyidamola Fabi, was a devout Christian and a worshipper at Methodist Church, like I told you earlier, at Methodist Church Idogo. She often took Ebenezer Obey to church with her in church, to worship with her in church. The story is told of how toddler Obey will always be found among the choristers playing with their musical instruments to the extent that a visiting minister at their church once said that the child will one day become a very popular musician. Right on the level, me will speak out the Lagos State Assembly. Obasa, Obasa, Oda, Zero, Obasa, Obasa, Oda. The congregational aims were Ebenezer Obey's earliest contact with the music world, and they influenced his emergence as a juju musician. Seeing that Juju is a jerk of music that partly has its origin in church hymns. He graduated from attending church and listening to music to participate in the music making process by joining the church choir. This was how young Ebenezer Obey was made into the musician. It was then not much of a surprise when in the 1990s Ebenezer Obey eventually gave in and transitioned to the gospel genre of music. Before he became a gospel singer, he had received signs which he turned a blind eye to. However, after a successful career spanning several decades, Obey said that he received clear messages from God which were clearer than ever. He said he heard the voice saying, Son, I want you to leave what you were doing. That was the juju he was singing before. I want you to come and work for me. That was the voice of God to be. After initial struggles in his spirit, the chief commander started the Cross Fellowship Center, where they had midweek programs. It was strictly a fellowship then and not a church. The people who got converted during their outreaches were sent to different churches in Agike where they could worship and continue communion with God. As reluctant as Obey was to venture into the ministry fully, he received an invite from Archbishop. Archbishop Ben Idaosa, who told him that God had a message for him. The chat he had with the Archbishop Idaosa uh, did so much to convince him that he had to become a gospel singer and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Archbishop told Obey that God was willing to use him just as he used Moses. This single incident confirmed the genuineness of the call that the chief commander has been receiving. After another message of God through Dr. Munro, Ebenezer Obey focused on preaching the gospel through music 
and the Lord prospered me. Under his name, Chief Commander Ebenezer Obey has also written songs for several musicians. We've been talking about the Chief Commander Ebenezer Obey, right? And how he shot into the limelight, his struggles in music, and how he be eventually became an evangelist. His song. His songs are evergreen. They don't fade out. Ranging from his inspirational songs and correctional songs, songs of advice. There was a time. Sometimes some of his songs too are also proverbial. Looking at this song, where it said, uh, "This song, go some bottle later, we see what only we like." There is no how you, no matter what you do, you can satisfy human beings. Human beings are just insatiable. So they are, I just fell in love with these stories of how a man, a man and his son were to travel to a distant land. Then they decided that okay, two of them had to be on the camel or donkey. They were going, both of them were were on the horse and yeah, moving on. Then say people of the world saw them again. Oh, aren't you wicked? Why would you? Why would that was according to the song? I wish I could say it. That why would both of you be on the on the donkey? Do you want to kill it? They came down. Baba said, "Okay, okay, you son, come down. Let me be on the horse." Another said, "Saw them. Ooh, Baba, ooh, ooh, you're good for nothing. Why would you be on the horse? And your son walking on the road. Okay, good. Okay, let me be on the ground. I just want to please you." So he decided to put the song the son on the donkey why he walks alone it's another said so him papa oh my god this is not right what are you to teaching the song you you should be on the horse while your son should be on the while your son should be working so eventually he said oh finally you people of the world i will just convince you i will just satisfy you and then he decided to leave the donkey walking all by himself why the the donkey well he and the son walked by the donkey i guess what he met another set that said Ooh, baba you must be crazy what's the usefulness of the donkey why the donkey moves empty and you and your soul walk behind it so it was actually an interesting story and there was one where he said uh one who sees money in his dreams in his dreams and decides to rejoice he should not just base his life on the dream but should wake up and uh and work so that's all we have today of biography trend and that has been the biography of chief obey fabi yi ebeniza obey fabi yi thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel to get more on biography trends my name is lovely kerry thank you